Hey guys, it's Doc, and today I'm going to talk to you about a really cool pool cooling system. I know. So if it's so cool, why am I not shouting and jumping up and down? It's because it's uh, 6.45 in the morning. My neighbors will think I'm nuts. This is a really cool, cheap, $10 system that you can uh, build yourself from parts at Lowe's. I'm going to show you how to do it today. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, last week or week before I came out and was playing around with some hose systems I have a video up on but the wife was giving me that um, that redneck eye stank redneck eye stank uh, so I said ah, that's not gonna work so I need to come up with something more professional looking um, more aesthetic so I went ahead and spent uh, spent half a day designing this system about and playing with it and building two or three prototypes before I actually came up with my final. So let me show you what I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to cool your temperature using the morning air. Now I'm going to tell you real quick, an important note on this is most of your pool panels will have a service mode and then a delay service mode. If you push the delay service mode, it'll actually put it, whatever settings you put it in, it'll put it let it run for about four hours now that's my system and then it will switch it back over to your normal schedule so see if you have that it really works out well for me because what I do is I come out here about six in the morning I hit that delay service mode um, I set this up and then four hours later my pool returns to normal got it so I don't have to babysit this thing so let me show you real quick great solution real cheap get it all at Lowe's or Home Depot. All right, so we all have jets on our pool You've got side jets and then you usually have stair jets. And what I decided to do is I decided to use my stair jets so I'd have the length of the swimming pool out here. I want to use that long length of the swimming pool. And what I've done is I've installed these automatic, uh, let's call them automatic dropping pool coolers. You can see it there and you can probably see one there. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you how to make these real quick, but let me show you how I turn them on in the morning. The nice thing about these is that when you shut them off, they're gonna be up spring. When you shut them off, they sort of drop down naturally and then you can push them down away from people grabbing them, etc. on the sides. So now all I have to do, I don't even like to bend down, so I'm just gonna take, uh, I'm just gonna take my pool skimmer That's one side. I'm going to bring one side up. And we can see how that's shooting all the way down the pool. Fine mist gathering all that cool air. Now let's do the other side. And so now I have dual spraying zones that are spraying up a fine mist. And that's the key to it is the fine mist that goes up high and catches that morning temperature when it's 69, 70 degrees and your days are 90. And uh, I can do this, I, again, I set my automatic system on for the delay, the service delay mode, which lets it stay like this for four hours and then it shuts off and everything else kicks on normal. My cleaner kicks on and everything else. When that happens, these things right here will drop down automatically into the water, which is kind of nice so I can leave and not worry about something going wrong. But I wanted to get a sort of a close-up so you could see them working. See them spraying, because it's taken me a while to sort of develop this. Yeah, develop it from NASA. But you can see that fine mist I've got going out there. And let me get it from the side so you can see how far this actually shoots. Here are my sprayers. The spray's coming up, 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 up been shooting well wow, that's really going a long way some of that water so that pad is about the halfway point and I've got water hitting all the way down here if you have kids they love this kind of crap so <laughs> this this little thing just don't you know you just got to tell people no touching the little things on the side because if they grab a hold of them as a side rail of course you might risk breaking your your vent have to replace your uh, your pool jet. Hey guys, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and shut this off for you so you can see what happens. So we, you can see what happens to these two once I shut it off. All right, 
that was real dramatic, but now you can see. So now that I've shut them off, depending on where my threading is, again, where my threading is, these drop down automatically for me. So now what's gonna happen is, is I put it on the temporary service mode and my pump shut off. Those units drop down under the water and so now during the day when it's warm, they drop down and the normal filters are gonna run. They're also gonna act as sort of a side jet on the side. They'll also be spraying out water too. But I did wanna, I did wanna show you real quick. We have these side steps, which I don't like and you can actually trip on them, but that's not an actual step, you can see. So we can't go over this side anyway, so you can see how that tube dropped down. Now this is an important note about your threading, where your threading stops on this actual unit. You can see that one drops all the way down, and there's a bee underwater on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. There is a bee underwater on the tube. It's just nuts. And then look at this one. You know, see how that one, the threading on it, that's where the threading locks in. So it's a little complex when you get your threading right, but you can mark it with a wax pencil underwater um, before you actually glue it up. What's kind of important about the threading aspect on this is um, get it close to where you want. So that's where you want your threading sort of to stop right there. When you bring it up, even though it's kind of loose, the pressure, the back pressure of the water holds that tube in place. So when you lift it up, it's going to be uh, kind of loose, but the back, but the, the, the pressure from the spray is going to hold it in place. When the pump shuts off, it, the pressure's gone, it's going to drop off. Does that make sense? That's how you sort of tell when you line it up. That's why I said before you glue this all up, um, put it in and test it. Hey guys, so let me go over the parts list with you and talk about a couple real important points. Probably the most important point that I learned by mistake was that you're going to take off the spa cap on the stairways and what you're going to do is you're going to get a, this is a threaded to a female slip. You're going to screw that in until it stops. Important. Screw it in lightly until it stops. Once it stops, you're going to take a 90 degree little slip here and you're going to put this in and you're going to put it in at the down angle when it stops. That's important and here's why. When you turn on the system <clears throat> and you push the pole up, you're unscrewing it and you're loosening it. The pressure will hold it, the spray pressure will hold it in place. When your pump shuts off, this is going to drop back down automatically and you want it to be able to drop down. So you got to make sure that when the thread stops, put this in underwater, put it in stop, put it in underwater, put it here and mark it with some kind of wax pen or something on top before you glue that thing. I made that mistake. Got that straight. So tight, the threads are tight or barely tight. When you bring it up, you're unscrewing it and loosening it. The next issue is you can do it any way you want, get any parts you want, but the important part of this is, is if you glue all this together, what's going to happen? Well, when you try and screw it in, it's going to hit the stairs or hit the side of the pool. So you have to have this tube so it can unscrew. So once you've put this kind of system into the side of the pool, you also want to have some kind of threaded section here so that what you can do is after you install it you can take this tube and you can screw it on okay so you can sort of see what I've done here it's a hodgepodge of parts you can do it any way you want you can pick on any parts you want but those two but the key elements are making sure that that thread stops putting it down and making sure that this tube can unscrew how long is the tube? It depends on your pool. I took a 24 inch piece of tube, cut it in half, that's 12 inches plus whatever rest is on there. Let's talk about a cap. <clears throat> Let's talk about the cap and the holes. This is the other important point because what I didn't realize is this little slot here, this little slot here needs to be really, really thin. I tried a regular saw going across with a saw, it was too big. 
Then I went to a hacksaw, or actually a cross cut, real thin, and it was pretty good. But what I ended up doing then is I just cut a little slot through here. I put a piece of Gorilla Tape on the inside, or duct tape, and then I went back with a razor blade and just slit that. And that helped out a lot. The next one I made, I actually used a Dremel. Now the Dremel comes with a round, really thin cutting disc. And what I did is I took that disc and I just cut straight down and kept it really thin. And that's one of those that you see out there now. Works really well. What about drilling? Remember, if you drill holes, you're going to have a stream. It's going to come out in a round stream. So if you do drill holes, you're going to want to drill holes very, very small, 16th inch type holes through here. And the other thing is, the nice thing about drilling too is, <clears throat> if you're a sidewall, once you install this, the sidewall may not be square on those stairs, and that's like on mine. Mine actually tilt a little bit, so it might want to shoot off to the side of the pool. Well, if you use a drill, what you can do is, is when you come in, you can drill a little bit of an, at an angle. You can drill a little bit of an angle and have those holes shoot a little bit of an angle. I did try, which I don't have with me, I did try, instead of using a right angle, I tried a 22 degree and a 45 degree. It doesn't really work well. But I will suggest buy several of these and don't glue it on until you've absolutely tested it. This will fit on really tight. Test it and make sure the spray pattern's right. Mark the upside, put top, and then glue it. Um, but you're probably going to screw about four of these up with the spray patterns, and that's about it. So anyways, once it's done, you'll screw this into the, screw this into the side of the wall. Then you'll just screw this on underwater. And when it's off, it's going to be down here, and the threads will stop. So my threads have locked in. Then when you want to run it, turn your pump on tilt it up and that pressure will actually hold this up in the air. When the, as soon as the pops, the pump stop, even if it's for a second or two, this will drop down automatically below the water and it'll actually act like a normal recirculating side jet. It's pretty cool. So that's it guys. Hope that helped. Doc, how you do it? Yeah.